In this video, we're going to talk about soluble and insoluble compounds. We're going to talk about how to tell if it's going to be aqueous or a solid. So we're going to go over the solubility rules. And then towards the end of this video, we're going to go and do a few practice problems and some examples. So uh, let's get started. So let's start with the solubility rules. You need to know the compounds or the ions that are always soluble. If you can remember these, that's half the battle. So the ones that are always soluble, this includes the lithium plus cation, Na plus, K plus, all of the group one metals, basically the metal ions that are in the first column of the periodic table. So like cesium, rubidium, all of these are always soluble. Now there are some other ions that are always soluble as well. These include uh, the ammonium ion, the uh, nitrate ion, acetate, and chlorate and perchlorate. These are always soluble. Now there's some other ones that you need to know. So on the left side, I'm going to put the compounds that are, or the ions that are generally soluble. And on the right side will be the exceptions. So if the ions on the left are attached to the ions on the right side, they will be insoluble. So let's separate these two with a line. So chlorides, bromides, and iodide are generally soluble except when bonded to elements such as uh, silver, lead, and the mercury uh, the mercury one cation. Okay, so next let's move on to the sulfates. The sulfates are generally soluble, except with uh, calcium two plus, strontium two plus, barium two plus. lead 2 plus, silver, and the mercury 1 cation. So sulfates are generally soluble except when bonded to one of those ions. So now let's go over the ones that are generally insoluble. So if they're on the left side, it's going to be insoluble. But if you have an ion that's on the left bonded to something that's on the right, then it's going to be soluble. The right side is going to be the exceptions again. So hydroxides are generally insoluble. However, there are some exceptions. And the exceptions are the alkali metals like sodium or potassium. Ammonia is one of them. It's not an alkali metal, but when bonded with hydroxide, it's still considered to be soluble. And also, there's some group 2 uh, metals that are soluble with hydroxide. It starts with calcium and everything below calcium. So calcium is like slightly soluble. Strontium is soluble with uh, hydroxide. And the same is true for barium. Magnesium is insoluble with hydroxide, and so is beryllium. Now, the other ones that are insoluble are the carbonates, the phosphates, the chromates, and the sulfides. The only exceptions to these are the group 1 metals like sodium, lithium, and uh, potassium and also the ammonium ion. 
other than that, for the most part, those these ions are insoluble. So now, what we're going to do at this point, we're going to go over some examples. I'm going to give you a list of compounds, and I want you to pause the video and determine if it's soluble or insoluble. Now, if it's soluble, write AQ. AQ means that it's aqueous, it's dissolved in water, it's soluble. For a solid, that means it's a precipitate. It doesn't dissolve in water, so it's insoluble. So write S for insoluble, because it's a solid in water, and write AQ if it's soluble, meaning that it dissolves in water. So go ahead and try uh, these problems. So let's start with NaCl, sodium chloride. Now, Na is a group 1 metal. Anytime you see a group 1 metal, it's always going to be soluble. So we're going to write AQ. It can dissolve in water. AgCl. Let's look at the, the chloride part first. The halides, like chlorides, bromides, and iodides, are generally soluble except with silver, lead, and mercury. So silver is an exception, so it's going to be insoluble. So we're going to write S for solid. Now, what about potassium hydroxide? The first thing I would look at is potassium, which is a group 1 metal. It's in the first column of the periodic table, and those are always soluble, so this is going to be AQ. Now, for aluminum hydroxide, looking at hydroxide, hydroxides are generally insoluble, except with group 1 metals, and except with some of group 2 metals. Aluminum is in group 3A or group 13 of the periodic table, so it's not in group 1, and it's not in group 2, so therefore, it's going to be insoluble with hydroxide. So let's try some more examples. Okay, go ahead and try these 10 problems. Pause the video and see if you can do it, and then unpause it to check your answer. Barium hydroxide. Hydroxides are generally insoluble, but barium is a group 2 metal, and barium is one of the exceptions, so it's going to be soluble. So we're going to write AQ for soluble. Magnesium iodide. Iodides are generally soluble except with silver, lead, and mercury. So magnesium is not an exception, so it's going to be soluble. However, lead to iodide, lead is an exception with iodide. So iodide is generally soluble, and lead is the exception, so therefore lead iodide is insoluble. And so this is going to be a solid. Lithium carbonate. Looking at lithium, it's a group 1 metal. Group 1 metals are always soluble. So we're going to write AQ for soluble. Barium sulfate. Sulfates are generally soluble, but barium is an exception. So this is going to be insoluble. Potassium sulfide. Well, potassium is a group 1 metal. Once you see a group 1 metal, automatically it's soluble, so aqueous. Lithium is a group 1 metal, so that's going to dissolve in water. Calcium phosphate. Phosphates are generally soluble, except with group 1 metals and ammonium. So calcium is not an exception, so it's going to be insoluble. It's going to be a solid. Magnesium sulfate. Sulfates are generally soluble, except with most of the group 2 elements, like calcium, strontium, barium, and lead. Magnesium is not an exception, so magnesium sulfate is generally soluble. 
And lastly, aluminum phosphate. Phosphates are generally insoluble, and aluminum is not an exception. So this is going to be a solid. It's insoluble. So let's try a few more practice problems. So the first one is going to be barium nitrate and calcium sulfide, ammonium hydroxide, mercury 2 chloride, sodium phosphate, silver acetate, aluminum perchlorate, barium carbonate, ammonium carbonate, and finally calcium acetate. So go ahead and try these problems. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can get these uh, problems correct. So barium nitrate, is it soluble or insoluble? Now nitrates are always soluble, so this is going to be aqueous. Calcium sulfide. Sulfides are generally insoluble, and calcium is not an exception. So we're going to put solid. Ammonium is always soluble, so we're going to write aqueous. And chlorides are generally soluble, but mercury is an exception, so this is going to be a solid. Now sodium is an alkali metal in group 1, so it's always going to be soluble. And acetates are always soluble, so we're going to put AQ. Perchlorates are always soluble. Carbonates are generally insoluble, and barium is not an exception, so this is going to be a solid. Ammonium is always soluble, so ammonium... Uh, carbonate is aqueous and we said that acetates are always soluble so if you know the ions that are always soluble you can get like 60 or 70 percent of these problems correct so knowing that can help you to find out which ones are soluble and which ones are insoluble and just make sure you know some of the exceptions and then you should be okay uh, for your next chemistry exam so that's it for this video thanks for watching and uh, have a great day